The scripture for today, if you have your Bibles, is in 1 John chapter 4. We'll be reading verses 7 through 11. 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 11. If you have your Bibles, you can open to that passage or you can read it on the screen here. 1 John chapter 4, beginning of verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation or the loving sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We've been in a series on uh, the Good Shepherd from Psalm 23. And usually you saw pictures of a shepherd carrying the sheep, either the stained glass version or, or the one that uh, has the shepherd with the sheep around his neck and he's holding on to the sheep. And those are uh, always meaningful. But here's another meaningful picture of the Good Shepherd, one that feels a bit more uh, like the real deal in terms of who Jesus is. This is how I think of him, and this is how I see him in terms of an ability to, to hold us close, to embrace us, to love us with just undeserved love, unimaginable love. And it seems as though it's like a divine embrace. <clears throat> I was studying the Lord's Prayer and <clears throat> a friend of mine had written a commentary on it and it was Paul Anderson of George Fox University. And he said and mentioned that when we pray our Father who art in heaven, that that is like a divine embrace, that we're, we're addressing the Lord as our heavenly Father. So I'm going to ask if you'd keep on the slides, just stay with me and we'll go through this together as we did in the first service, we're really talking about every expression of God's love as a divine embrace. I want you to think about it, especially in times that are difficult, difficult for you and for me, the times that you go through, the times when maybe you're just bored or the times when it's a difficult trial. Remember, the expressions of God's love is like living in His embrace. So God embraces you with his love is a scripture, a scriptural truth. We read that here in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 4 and many places throughout the word that he tells us how much he loves us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So when you think about God of the universe, God who created all things, embraces you and me. It's just incredible to think about how much he loves us and the ways that he embraces us. I'm going to show you pictures. Uh, I was with the team in the Navajo Nation. And on the left, the man there is the vice president uh, of the Navajo Nation. And our uh, guy with him is Aiden. And so when he goes back to school, in a couple of weeks, and by the way, we need to be praying for our teachers and students going back to school. When they say, what did you do this summer? Aiden's going to be able to say, oh, I danced and bumped uh, the vice president of the Navajo Nation. Uh, what did you do last summer? <laughs> uh, it's just incredible how the Lord leads us into experiences that are so cool. And the ladies sitting on that ledge there See how they're holding on to each other. The Lord loves you so much that he gives you people that you can hold on, who will hold on to you, who will go th through all kinds of trouble and darkness and will be a friend to you. Think about, you know, what price. It's just priceless uh, how the Lord loves us and what he gives to us. Moving on to the next slide. Think about how love comes from God and the love in your life comes from God. And that love, you begin to think, well, how do I know 
that this love is from God. It will look like Jesus. It'll be just like the Lord. It might be in someone's forgiveness or in their grace or in their willingness to give of themselves. We went to a monument and it had this huge cross. And think of it as the scripture says in 1 John 4, God's love is demonstrated in that he sent his son to die for us. Anyone who's willing to give their life for you, anyone who's willing to give up themselves or to put you first, is Christ-like love. And it is a divine embrace. Just see it as such. The love of God in your life is a form of his embrace. And our own Eric Houck on this mission trip led with the love of Christ for the Navajos, for us, for uh, the Lord and the way that he serves the Lord. And that's why God can use Eric in such dramatic ways. Because Eric and his leadership and in his ministry, it looks like Jesus. When it comes your way, someone forgives you. Someone embraces you. And even when you come here for worship, it is a divine embrace that we are here together. It is as though Jesus is drawing us to himself. Go on to the next slide. There you see our team. We were at that monument, and it's uh, the Lord's Supper. And our team gathered all around the disciples and Jesus and decided, let's all join around the table because the embrace is for us all. Go on to the next slide and you think that was the Lord's Supper and this is another supper we had. At uh, It was Chuck and Cindy Harper. They are the leaders of this Indian mission and ministry. And the vice president was there and we all had... Navajo tacos that night but it was a blessing for us all to be together encourage each other and his blessing comes to children and adults to Navajo and whites from the greatest to the least we all get in on it and that means you and I know I'm like you you wonder how could he love us so when we think of how we might fail how we blow it, how we say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing. Still the Lord loves us. Moving on to the next slide, he comes to us in a way that his love is shaping us. Your life is being shaped by his love. It's all formative. All the things going on in your life under God's control, it's all formative. Remember Mary who lived in darkness became a friend of Jesus Christ and how his love changed her. Think of the disciples, how they were afraid at times. They abandoned Jesus at times. And then they were embraced by the Spirit of Christ and turned into dynamic servants and disciples who could change the world. The Lord's love is formative, even when it doesn't feel that way. Sometimes there are heavy loads to bear. We found that uh, on our mission trip, part of the work we did one day was to move a shed. See us on the, there were about 20 of us around that shed. We all had to pick it up on three. Yeah, there were about 20 of us. We all picked up that shed and lifted it over onto a trailer. And then we walked alongside the shed up a hill, around the bend, down a road and put it where they wanted it. You, you just would be so impressed with how well our kids work and how hard they worked. It was 95 to 100 degrees every day, and they didn't whine or complain. Now, I know, Mom and Dad, you're thinking, I can't get them to pick up anything off the floor of their room, and here they are picking up sheds for the Navajos. It just says that your instruction, your loving attention is formative. They do it when it counts. They did it there. And then we also, we were either pushing sheds, pitching trash, or pulling nails. That's what we're doing in that board. We're pulling nails out of wood that they wanted to use to rebuild a wall and to help with some construction projects. It saved so much money because we could use the wood over again. In order to be useful for the Lord's care and for his ministry for the care that we give to others 
Some things are going to have to go out of our lives, and he lovingly may pull them away from us, may work on us like we were working on these boards to make them useful. In his love for us, he may give us heavy loads to carry. He may work on us in ways to help us, to form us and shape us and make us more fit for the master's use. So don't think that he's abandoned you when it's a heavy load to carry or that you feel like he's working in some area of your life. He's embracing you with his love to shape you for his purposes and his call on your life. So remember this as you go to the next slide. Remember, the love of Christ is an embrace. He cares deeply. It's not just some passive thing. He moves toward us, and you can be assured of it. He is the one who will be working in your life in ways that you never dreamed possible, doing things that you never thought possible because of his love. So go on to the next slide. Remember that God has embraced you with his love, and it will look like Jesus. The things that look like Jesus in terms of when people are moving toward you and caring for you, reaching out to you, Consider that an embrace of the Lord. He said, I will come to you. And when he comes to you, it'll be in a variety of forms. It might, there's a song we sing, Blessings, that it might look like rain instead of sunshine, you know? But it's life-giving and it has a way of shaping you. So it'll look like Jesus and it'll also be the kind of thing that uh, will make you more fit for his use in serving others. Your life is being shaped um, and it's all formative the passage in Romans 5 says that one thing leads to another if you want to hear it Romans 5 says and not only this but also we exult in tribulation knowing that trials or tribulation brings about perseverance perseverance proven character and proven character hope and that doesn't disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. The Holy Spirit in our lives is an act of or an expression of God's love. And then a passage in, uh, according to Paul, as he wrote to the Corinthians, said that as we behold the Lord and as we see him working in our lives, we are being transformed into his image, formed into the image of Christ. So keep that in mind, that God has embraced you with his love. It looks like Jesus, and it's uh, for your uh, service and for your ministry. Then as you move on, think about not only has God embraced you with his love, and that's a divine embrace. Move on to the next slide. God's love is what we owe to one another. That's what the scripture says. It says, uh, love one another. Since God has so loved us, we ought to love one another. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, whatever God has done for you and me, we owe to one another. Now think about that. So when you're wondering, do I really need to forgive? Do I need to show mercy? Do I need to be generous? Do I need to have faith? Do I need to walk in troubled waters? Can I believe it? Well, according to the scriptures, since that is what the Lord has done for us and went all the way to the cross, that is what we owe to one another. Move on to the next slide. We are called then, not only, not only do we receive a divine embrace, we are called to be a divine embrace. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Be the embrace that you want to experience be that kind of loving embrace to someone else. Be a divine embrace because then the Lord is using you as a channel or an instrument of his love. Move on to the next slide. Notice that um, you and I are meant to be sacred instruments. Jim has that in some of his teaching, Jim Smith. And it's so good that we have him uh, coming and being more involved as a teacher. I use some of his teachings in of course, I teach at Barclay as a divine instrument or a sacred instrument. Well, think about the opportunity we have 
to offer a sacred embrace. It's so different than the rest of the world and how dark and ugly is what they call love. When we can offer a sacred embrace. On the left is Darren and Mikey, who are the leaders, the Navajo leaders, and uh, they just served so well, and they led with such compassion. And when they had to say to us hard things like, we need you to do this or that, we need you to do something that is really difficult, they would love us and thank us for our willingness to do it. And um, they showed, even by their own example, they worked day and night to, to host us, which was get up early and stay up late to take care of us and fed us three meals a day and so on. I have that middle picture just to show how uh, our friendships that the Lord has given us are sacred to us. They are like a sacred embrace that we get each phone call or a note or a text or an email or someone who will go for a walk, someone who you can be with when you don't want to be alone. That's a sacred embrace from the Lord to be with a friend or someone just who loves you. And then this third picture on the right, that's Megan uh, Ralston. That's the vice president's little boy. And he kept running to Megan, and so Megan would pick him up, carry him around, and she loves children. And, you know, the little children don't even know it. Oh, you know, they know it in their own way that this is a divine embrace. And see, Megan was not only given the little boy an embrace, but an embrace to the family that allowed the vice president and his wife to worship with all of us rather than chase the little boy around the sanctuary. Megan had the little boy, so the family was able to worship and to uh, be active and involved in what we were doing that night. Moving on, as you think about how the Lord loves us, think about how much it can impact even the hardest of hearts. I found that even military commanders respond to the love of God. We were there in Burundi, Africa, uh, back in oh, about the year 2000 when the Civil War was raging. And the commander and his troops were on a hillside near one of our churches. We were visiting churches to encourage them in the midst of civil war. And so we met the commander, and I asked, could, could we pray with you? And he said, okay, sure. And so I began to pray for him. And when we finished praying, he bowed down and stood up and was weeping underneath those dark glasses of his. And he said, I know you must love us. Because you come to us in civil war, and you keep coming back to us. Even hardened military commanders, even people who you wouldn't possibly believe could be moved by God's love, their hearts are melted and their, their guard drops down and they become open to a divine embrace. So you never know how God might use you. Moving on in the slides, remember that you can also feel God's embrace from others. This is, um, um, what's this guy's name, Eric? Where'd he go? Yeah, Adrian Branch. And that's our Sean and Ashton. Um, Adrian Branch was there for that outreach, that basketball outreach. And he embraced them and uh, he goes there to do outreach. He's a former NBA uh, basketball player. He goes on outreach events to embrace others in the name of Christ. Move on. Just know that the Lord's embrace will come through others and can come in various forms. Again, Romans 8, 37 tells you the power of a divine embrace. Here in that scripture it says, in these things we are made more than conquerors through him who loved us. That means we are super victors. We are kingdom champions. Many of you know that I'm from Michigan and I'm a big Michigan Wolverine fan. But as much as I'd love for Michigan to win the Big Ten and your favorite team to win their league, whatever that is, whether it's a, a Big 12 or SEC and all of that, you can tell football's starting up soon. I care much more about being a kingdom champion. And that's really what the scripture is saying. 
that it is through his love we are more than conquerors. You are a winner in the kingdom. You are a super victor. And you don't have to be ashamed or um, timid. Or, In fact, Jesus kept saying to his disciples, Be not afraid. I am with you even to the ends of the earth. So understand that you're not just being shaped by his love. It is his love that's leading you to victory. So even when you feel defeated today or tomorrow or about something in your life, the Lord is leading you to victory. And the scripture says we always triumph through Jesus Christ and his cross, his death on the cross. The next slide gives us some direction as we think about closing the service today. Accept God's embrace. Remember, we fact, we just sang it. My soul will rest in his embrace. Let your soul rest in the Lord's embrace today and give him thanks for it. It's an expression of faith. And then the next slide. Not only accept God's embrace, accept the call to be his embrace for others. Be the embrace of God that someone needs. That's a good reason to get up when a lot of other things aren't going so well in your life. You always have the opportunity to get up. Watch for a way to reach out to someone else and be that divine embrace that can make a difference in someone's life. Go to the next slide. The scriptures in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14, Paul has given final thoughts to the church at Corinth and one of the most important things, you know, you say the last thing you want to make sure they remember, he says to them, be strong and stand firm in your faith. And he goes on to say, and do everything that you do, do in love. Let it be done in love. Whatever you're doing, let it be done within the love of God because it'll have his blessing and you will have his strength to stand firm. There's a hymn that I remember growing up singing this hymn, take my life and let it be ever only all for thee. Let me move at the impulse of thy love. What does that mean? Let my life be so guided that I am directed by the impulse of his love. His love for me and the, his love within me for others. Accept his embrace by faith and then be the embrace of God to someone else. Be that divine embrace today. Again, see this final slide, this picture of Jesus embracing you. What can you say to that? How priceless is it to know that the Lord loves you so and that yours is a divine embrace today and that he draws you to himself through other people, through circumstances, through his word, through answered prayer. And today... As we just spend a moment just waiting on him in closing prayer, you can hold, up your, hold out your hands as we wait upon him and, and receive his love. Let it be healing to you. And then with hands still open, offer yourself to him as Lord in a willingness to be guided by the impulse of his love. May it be so. Accept his embrace and accept the call to be a divine embrace to others.